Hi. Um, so here I am. My name is Thierry Chow. And I was born in Hong Kong. And a lot of people have been asking me why. Why Feng Shui? And of all the people, because, at, you know, my appearance. And it's usually a grandpa look lookalike person who would go ahead and do Feng Shui. So I think it goes back to my childhood. This is me um, in kindergarten. As you can see I still have the same haircut. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so from when I was young, I think I have a lot of artistic um, talents already. So, and I think I, when I was in uh, kindergarten and grade school, I was really bad in school and I did not study. I did not like studying. And the only thing I was good at was art. And I remember in class I would keep daydreaming and doodle and on my tests. And, and I would cheat, actually. I would look over to my classmate to see if I could get some answers because I didn't know what the answers were. And so I, it was a really hard time for me. Um, so I think art was the only thing that kept me sane. And this is me in grade, I think grade three. And I was still in Hong Kong. And I think my father has a really big influence on me. And he is my idol. Um, and he does a lot of really good things and he helps people. And he's been a Feng Shui master for over 30 years. And here's a picture of him. He, um, as you can see, I'm not very happy about his mustache in there. <laughs> um, so I think I take a lot um, from my dad. And I knew from a young age that I wanted to be something big or somebody who does something special. And I always thought that I was going to be either a, fa a fashion designer or a designer, some, some type of. And then this is my dad recent years. He's still doing feng shui and he keeps studying every day. And so I think from the negative things, there is always the good things. And which I got from was when I went to Canada when I was 10, I got sent there and I had to learn English and make new friends all over again. And I, I think I learned to be really independent and strong and then when I came back to Hong Kong, I was about 22, and I finished my applied arts, applied um, Bachelor of Illustration. And then I was trying to find something that I really like, wanted to do. And I've been, I've done teaching art, I've done freelance, I've worked with a director. And I think I di still didn't feel like I found that one thing that I wanted to do. And then one day, I was talking to my dad, I was at home eating dinner, and then, and I looked at him and I said to myself, why not? Why not learn from my father, who's really willing to teach me all these things? And then, so that one second de determined my next chapter of my life. And so I my dad was still eating oranges after dinner. And I was like, oh, you know, I would like to apprentice under you. So let's go into what's feng shui. And I'm sure all of you have s some small knowledge or maybe really deep knowledge about it. But I would like you to delete what you know about feng shui. And hear what I have to say for the next 10 minutes of show. So feng shui is the sounds, is our nature, is the people around us. And it could be effective uh, mentally or physically. And it's things that you see every day, but sometimes you might get numb, uh, numb about them because you see them so often. And nowadays, because we are so used to technology and seeing buildings, that we kind of lose touch with nature. So what we do is we use our knowledge and we help people to find good living condition, good living areas, and to help them balance themselves. And one of the deeper um, knowledge about feng shui is when we study the stars and what it has effect on people. And that's the different directions representing different zodiacs, I'm sure you guys. And I would like to talk about modernizing feng shui more, which the first thing I did was I, I told myself it needs a new look, which is 
um, I made a logo for my own brand and my own company. And my, my company is called TRE. And I took the symbols of yin and yang, and then the symbols from the Yi Ching, and I made it contemporary. And here's my compass, which we use to determine what directions we are at. Um, and then what the, for example, what the sun would have uh, effect on people. And would it be better to have more sun or not good to have more sun? And I made it more of my own style. And I went into doing a lot of projects, which one of them was a party Tong Sing. And I, I'm not sure if you guys know what Tong Sing is. It's the Chinese uh, almanac that uh, the Chinese people really love and it's really popular among the Chinese. And they use it to determine what dates are good for them. For example, they use it for farming. And I took the cover and I changed it myself. As you can see, there's three people downstairs right here who's holding champagne bottles and they're getting drunk. And then the guy on the top who is supposed to be doing his job is also drunk. So, <laughs> and he's uh, puking and stuff. And then I uh, also did uh, the 12th Zodiac and you know, write about partying and you know, more relevant to younger people or people who you know, want to have more fun. And I did the illustration for what kind of guys you should watch out for when you go clubbing. <laughs> and the ladies, uh, you can take some pictures. Um, so the first one is <laughs> crazy, sex crazy. And then the second one is liar. And then there's the poor guy. Not all poor guys are bad, but you know, if they like gambling, so just forget it. And then there's a the crazy violent guy. I don't know if you know these people. And then I went into doing a lot of writing. So a lot of column writing. And I like to put a lot of fashion into it. And so for example, what kind of colors would make you more balanced and luckier or feel happier? And I determine, I determine your birthday and I tell you what color is good for you. And I started doing a lot of workshops, which I took the compass and I started doing workshop teaching people how to make um, you know, a more contemporary compass and then teaching them actually how to use feng shui to balance their life. And here's the compass accessories. Uh, I'm not in here, but. And then I do feng shui fashion therapy workshops, which is also the idea of teaching people how to use um, their surroundings and their, the colors to balance their own life. And here's me in, in the class. And we had a lot of jokes, and, and yeah, they had upgraded their feng shui knowledge. And my goals and dreams. And I think throughout the years, I've been doing it for four to five years now, and it's been hard um, in terms of because of my appearance or whatever reason, um, I had to learn extra hard. And I had to and I always had this idea that I was going to do something big. And, and I think I found my goal and dream throughout these few years. And I think what feng shui is, it really de de uh, depends on who you are and what your perspective is. Because it can be you know, a little bit negative sometimes, and people can think it's superstition. And I think it just depends on how you look at it. And for me, my perspective is to use it to force myself and to help more people in the future. And in 2007, there is estimated about 53,000 people living in cage homes in Hong Kong. And I think that's a little bit too much. And I would like to, one day, be able to help these people renew their home or you know, just uh, give them a more comfortable home, even though it's small, but I think it's doable. And then, last and not least, our environment. I think when w what we all had back then as human beings was only nature, and I think we had a closer relationship to it. And we looked at it closely, we studied the stars, and we looked at the trees and the ocean, and I would like to 
through my work, actually bring back the awareness for people to actually, you know, look at the nature more often. And if we don't do that, then I think it's going to be gone in, how, I don't know how many years, but it's going to be gone. So, yeah, and I think this is my goal, and I hope that one day I will be able to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.